Alright, you two, here we are. Ugh. Just call me when you need my services. I'm getting as far away from this dump as possible. See yous. Yep, thanks. So, here we are, Kitty. Fishmouth. <sighs> Is this foul, rotting sea life odor in any way mouthwatering to you? Please, it's sickening, and I'd literally rather be anywhere else right now, but we've got a job to do. Let's find Finman's before we revisit my lunch and dinner. So what are we doing, Kitty? Finman House? Olmstein? Any of these ring any bells to you? I guess I was hoping you'd be more specific. I have my moments. Now is not one of them. It's a thuggish-looking big guy smoking a horribly stinky cigarette. Hello there, sir. Buzz off. <laughs> Actually, funny thing about that. I mean it, out-of-towner. Okay. A couple of Fishmuthians. Looks like they're guarding that archway there. They look uh, very, um, iconic. Hey, folks, mind if I squeeze through? We don't mind or nothing, stranger. We just strongly discourage it. Strongly discourage it? Okay, I can respect that. So, can you let me through anyway? We ain't shopping you. We just strongly discouraging it. Well, it's easy, really. Each one of you just has to take one step, no, half a step in the opposite direction, and we're all happy. We ain't stopping you, stranger, but we ain't moving either. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Buzz Kerwin, and I'm a tourist here in this beautiful seaside town of yours. Martha. Martha Webfoot. Liz here's my husband, Silas. We's the Fishmuth Citizens Brigade. Proud volunteers. Just watching over things, making sure the festival gonna go smooth. That's our job now. The festival? It ain't got nothing to do with you or your kind. Yeah, that's why we strongly discouraging you from entering Fishmouth. But I'm a participant. Really? Judging by your accent, I would have said Eastern Orthodox. No, I mean, I'm part of the festival. Then you're either a pilgrim, or you're one of them entertainers. Pilgrim you ain't, cause you ain't got the garb, and you sure don't smell like one. So that'll make you an entertainer. Let's see that entertainer license. Look behind you! A three-legged toad! <laughs> well, that must be Skippy, little Bartholomew Liverwort's pet. Cute little fella, bouncing all over the place. Use that third leg as a kickstand, seen it with my own eyes. Oh, brother. Pfft, real artists don't need licenses. Well then, real artists ain't getting any deeper inside Fishmouth. Uh, it wasn't ready. They said just go in without it. Who said that? The, um, the, the, the committee. No license, no entry. Is there anything I can do to convince you to let me through? Boy, you've really given up on trying anything creative like, ain't you? We ain't letting you in without a license. Now, nah, Silas, don't be talking nonsense. We ain't stopping anyone here. Oh, uh, that's right, Martha. Oh, he's just... Strongly discouraging. Gotcha. I'll be back. We'll be here.
It says Fishmouth Tourist Board Tourist Information. It's the clerk in charge of this tourist info point. He looks uh, sophisticated. Hello. Good evening, sir, and welcome to our info point. My name's William LQPW Watersworth, and I'm an official representative of the Fishmouth Tourist Board. What can I do for you today, sir? Nice uh, evening we're having, huh? Nice is not a notion commonly associated with Fishmouth. While the evening, per se, with its undeniable charm and pleasant temperature would qualify as nice, we are in Fishmouth. Therefore, I submit that it's a horrendous evening. <laughs> okay. I'm here to visit Fishmouth for a while. If I may say so, sir. That is a horrible idea. Yeah, I thought I'd... W what Did you just say horrible idea? Why, of course. Fishmouth is a run-down, rotting, almost abandoned mockery of a town. Nothing to visit, the people are anything but hospitable, and we're really not accepting of strangers during this particular time of year. I thought you represented the Fishmouth Tourist Board. I do. You're a tourist, correct? Am I not informing you, sir? I do not see how this is confusing. You said you're not accepting of strangers this particular time of year. Are you more accepting at other times? No, not really. No. Is it me or are you going out of your way to drive people away from Fishmouth? Oh, we only have the tourist's best interest at heart. The best thing a tourist can do in Fishmouth is not be one. Be one what? A tourist in Fishmouth. Why do you not want me in Fishmouth? Oh, sir, you might have misunderstood. It's not that we don't want you in Fishmouth. We don't really want anyone here, ever. Is that an economically sound attitude you guys are having as a community? It is the will of the majority, sir. Which part of Fishmouth do you think is the absolute most repugnant to a visitor? That's got to be this plaza here we're situated in for sure. Really? What about the rest of the town? Oh, just as horrible. No, even more horrible. Thanks for clearing that up. Any change of heart about me visiting your lovely town? No, and not a chance of it in the foreseeable future either. <sighs> Thought I'd check. Mr. Watersworth, I will come clean. I'm one of the entertainers. What is this you speak of, sir? I don't understand. The festival, Mr. Watersworth. Is this where I pick up my official entertainer license? You are very, very, very early, Mr... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I uh, wanted to get a feel of the place before my performance. Uh, it's a habit of mine. Don't worry, I've arranged for my stay in advance. Very well, sir. What type of entertainment should I look under? I, uh, play the lute. Is that it? Uh, with my eyebrows. Though I would personally pay to see that. I've got no such entertainment listed here. <sighs> I was just uh, testing you. I can disperse an audience in less than 30 seconds. That's entirely too general, sir. Most of our entertainers fall within that category. I am a renowned magician. Magician? We have no magician's book, sir. One might say we have the real deal here in Fishmouth. Hmm... I'm a stand-up comedian. I would not have guessed, sir. Let us see here. No comedians listed here, I'm afraid. <laughs> Just kidding. Hilarious, sir. 
I have this talking cat. All right, let me see here. Mr. Tornston and his horrible singing beast, is it? Sure is. Oh, no, it isn't. Well, what do you know? It does speak. Oh, do make it sing, Mr. Tornston. It's time to stop being so modest, Kitty. The public wants you. Besides, I think Mr. Watersworth needs to be convinced of your singing abilities, lest he just give some imposters our license. Quite right, Mr. Tawson. We will talk about this, Mr. Tornston. What would you do with a fish, Miss Sailor? What would you do with a fish, Miss Sailor? What would you do with a fish, Miss Sailor? In the morning. That was something indeed. Memorable, huh? To say the least, sir. Here's your license, Mr. Tornston. Enjoy your stay, and... I know, I know. Keep out of everybody's business. Have a great evening, Mr. Watersworth. Doubtful. Goodbye. It's a bottle of really fancy liquor. Well, I won't just swipe the man's liquor from under his nose, but I doubt he'll be missing the label on the bottle, right? A cornucopia of... You should not be using words you don't know the meaning of. <sighs> a lot of creepy paintings, mostly fishing related. Fishermen, tentacles, barnacles, and greenish people? Okay. They all say fishmouth. Ew. I agree with the sentiment. It's a kid and her dog staring down at the water. Kids, man. Not a care in the world. Hey, kid. Good evening, sir. I'm Buzz. What's your name? I'm Annie. Annie Pole. This is my doggy woggy Tad. Nice to meet you, Annie and Tadpole. So, what you up to? Just waiting for my cousin. She was supposed to show up a half an hour ago. It's not like her to be this late. What's your cousin's name? Priscilla. Whoa! Really? You... You know her? Maybe. Well, hope she shows up real soon. Yeah, me too. I hope everything's all right. What are you drinking there, Annie? Dolphin's milk. It's really good for you, very nutritious. Yeah, uh, I bet it is. Hey, Annie. Think you could spare some of that Dolphin milk? Mmm, I would, but I might need to share it with Tad a bit later. See, he's really hungry, and my cousin's running really, really late. Ah, oh, poor Tad. Poor Tad. So he likes milk, huh? Not really. He'd prefer a sandwich. But he'll have to settle for milk, because it's all I've got. Got it. Is everything okay with Tad? What do you mean? Well, his eyes are... Um... Wide apart? Yeah, he just sees more that way. He sometimes misses things coming straight at him, but I keep an eye out for them. That's nice of you. See ya, Annie. Later, Buzz.
There's an intense purple light shining through the window in this door. Hello? Go away. But maybe I have a very important message to deliver. Go away. <sighs> Green light shining through this particular door's window. Mr. and Mrs. Webfoot, here's my entertainer's license. Huh. I'll be darned. Horrible singing pet, huh? Hey, didn't you say your name was Kirby or something? Torsten is my stage name. We just might be attending your show, Mr. Torsten. Welcome to Fishmouth. Keep yourself, and don't do no nosing around if you don't have to. Gotcha, Silas. See you folks around. There it is. That's Finman's over there. I don't know, man. It's been all fun and games so far, but this place is giving me the serious creeps. Can't argue with that. Well, we found the Finman house, all right. Charming place. That there must be the namesake of this hotel. Rough looking fella. Kinda gives me the chills to be honest. Hello there. <clears throat> what a great evening in Fishmouth, isn't it sir? Evening? Yeah, I suppose it is evening. Mm. I don't know what you find so great about it, though. You know, the salty, sea-scented breeze, the smell of rotting fish, the, the distant thunder... Charming! <coughs> Mr. Uh, Finman, I presume? <sighs> That's me, yeah. Nice hotel you've got here. Nice. Ain't nothing nice about it. We don't do nice in Fishmouth. There anything I can do for you, stranger? I'd like a room, please. I'd love to help you out, sir. We's all completely booked up. Really? I only see one key missing on that wall behind you. Ain't you been snooping around? Got a bunch of pilgrims coming over for the festival soon. That one standing there is the first of the bunch. Booked the whole place they did. Don't bother wasting your breath on him. He ain't talking nothing. You ain't from Fishmouth, is ya? I can smell it all over you. Why you come here? You're a direct man, aren't you, Mr. Finman? <clears throat> yeah, and I've been known to judge a man. He was nosy and skinny. Too skinny. Well, that was judgmental. <clears throat> yes, well, think nothing of it. I just got this. Hunger up in me. Ain't eaten nothing in a while. So, about that room? We's all booked. See that pilgrim standing over there? Him and his kind dumb about to arrive any minute now. Otherwise, I love to serve you. <laughs> Maybe it's me, but did that really warrant such a laugh? Ah, oh, think nothing of it, stranger. It's the hunger, you see. My stomach's growling is all. Makes me say all kind of things. Pay no mind. Can I interest you in this cookie I've got here? I'm a... I'm a meat man myself, but... Right now I could eat just about anything, I reckon. If it ain't meat, though, I got to wash it down some, and... I ain't got anything. Mm. You mean like alcohol, right? You was pretty smart for a stranger. All meat, huh? Got any preferences or anything goes? Oh, I got my preferences. <laughs> a 
sorry, Skinny. Don't be judging me. Look at yourself, ah, oh, skin and bone. Nothing I knew worth mentioning. Uh, what? W what'd you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> How come you don't have any alcohol around? Been no need. We've been having plenty of meat around here. Till it stopped coming, that is. Be arriving for the festival soon, though. Ain't that right, Pilgrim? Them, them brothers of yours arriving soon, eh? <laughs> I don't get it. Are the pilgrims bringing you meat? Oh, yeah, 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 you could say that. You could definitely say that. <laughs> That's one exceptionally jovial innkeep. Anyway... Oh, so the occupied room is the Spillrooms? No, it's someone else staying there. Can you tell me what his name is? Here at Flinman House, we value our customers' privacy. Uh-huh. What's this festival you mentioned? Nothing you should know of. That's our business. We fish... <laughs> Fishmouth folk. It's Fishmas business. We got our own to look up to. Don't need your funny smelling outsiders telling us what to do and who to listen to. I might just hang around and check it out if it's happening soon. That's not to be advised, Skinny. The Order don't take kindly to strangers. The Order? What Order? Nah, never you mind that. Aw, oh, come on, tell me. I'm here. Might as well learn a thing or two about Fishmouth. The only thing you need to know about that there esoteric order is that they don't want you here. So you best be on your way. That's all I can tell you. Has, uh, the guy in the room brought you any meat? Butcher, fancy yourself some kind of detective or something outsider? What's with all them questions now? I'm just curious by nature. <laughs> Too curious, you ask me. No place for your kind here, outsider. Just wondering how come your one customer hasn't provided you with any meat, that's all. He's a stranger in that one. He ain't nothing like our usual customers. Pays damn well, too. Gold, stranger, gold. We as likes our gold up in here. So, gold is popular around here, huh? Used to be... Mm, you asking way too many questions, Skinny. I'm here to see this gentleman. He ain't come down in a while. I don't reckon he will anytime soon. I wouldn't wait if I were you, stranger. You know, getting constantly called a stranger and an outsider tends to be a little grating after a while. Have you considered that? We don't take... Kindly. Gotcha. <sighs> I gotta run. Take care, stranger. <laughs> Looks like he's the strong, silent type. Hello! Okay then. Complimentary coffee. Black as midnight on a moonless night. How thoughtful of Mr. Finman. Nothing to pour it in. It seems like it's always 10 o'clock in this hotel. Thoughts on Finman? Uh, wouldn't want him as my neighbor. Or rather, my anything. I meant, how do we get past him and reach Olmstein? He's a more intense guy. I think we need to apply more intense measures. Murder? And he jumps straight to murder. That's telling, you know. Dial it back a little, killer. Hmm.
She looks really um not happy. Not really looking like she's excessively friendly. Hi there. You I I might be. Good luck. <laughs> Hey, what did you mean by good luck? It's no fun if I tell you. You're going to find out yourself soon enough. <laughs> Is there something about the Finman house you're not telling me? You got the wrong person, stranger. Tourist info's over that way. Not a lot of help from there, I'm afraid. Help Oh, you don't need that. Yet. <laughs> A great example of the Urban Decay School of Design. It gets really dark that way. Really dark. Oh, brother, this one's even darker. Nope, not going down there. One solitary lit window. Wonder who's in there. A Fishmuthian citizen, really intent on reading that newspaper. Handsome fella. Gliding down through the dark green water. Yeah? <laughs> he can breathe underwater because he has amphibious nostrils. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> On the way down, he passed hundreds of trout of different sizes. <gasps> trout are fresh water fish and have underwater weapons. Um, I mean, what? Trout are very valuable and immensely powerful. They are? Keep away from the trout! Uh, okay, that's a promise. Gliding down through the dark green water. Okay, he's on a loop. It's a fishbutt citizen, enjoying his sandwich. He looks surprisingly peaceful. Good evening, good sir. Evening, stranger. The name's Buzz. Buzz Kerwin. Nope, that's wrong, I'm afraid. The name's Milton. Milton the Mechanic. N no, I mean my name's Buzz. I didn't know they named kids Buzz anymore. I thought that was considered cruel and unusual. <sighs> the Mechanic? Is that your surname? Yes, sir. Maybe you heard of us if you're from around Miskatonic. We're a distant offshoot of the Kingsport the Plumbers. They hate our guts. Sorry to hear that. Nothing to be sorry about. We hates their guts too. Just straight up gut hating back and forth. Always been the way in our clan. It's nice to have traditions. Sure is. Is this your truck you're sitting next to? Sure was. It's dead now. Bleeding oil all over the road like them, like them zebras, you know, on National Zoo TV. Them poor, poor striped horses. Uh... Used to watch them shows a lot as a kid. Always got to me how them critters was meeting their end. I mean, a lion's gotta eat, but us humans? Man, we can do better than that. I made me a choice back then. You became a vegetarian? Hell nah! In Fishmouth? You crazy? We put fish in everything here. 
No, I swore off zebra meat forever. Never felt better, never felt the need for it. But yeah, the truck's mine. So are you doing anything about the truck? Nothing. Sitting here, hopeless, despairing, eating my tasty fish sandwich. Bon appetit. Nah, it's just tuna. What can you tell me about Fishmouth? Well, I don't know how you made it in, but the sooner your non-local hides is out of here, the better. Us Fishmouth folk don't like out of towners, no siree. And the order. The order? Mm, never mind, I'm just talking crazy. Been playing too many of them blasted video games, you know? Make you dumb, they do. Yeah, that's what I hear. Are you gonna eat your second sandwich? Now that's a very personal question, Mr. Curlin. What of it? I, uh, would like to have it. You would, wouldn't you? Well, I tell you what, I'll trade you for it. What do you have in mind? I have a craving. A craving for something scrumptious. A human heart, perhaps? Yours? Huh? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, I don't know what came over me. Been playing these dark sci-fi adventure games. They've been messing with me. True as I'm sitting here and telling you. Murder simulators. Awful stuff. Indeed. Where was I? Oh yeah. Get me something refreshing. And you got the sandwich. I think you'll like this can of Dr. Fisher. Why, I sure will. Dr. Fisher's trademark. My favorite! This gonna go down real good once I'm done with my sandwich. Made with the finest, most odorous fish muth water. Mm-mm. A deal's a deal, Mr. Kremlin. Here's your sandwich. Enjoy. Thanks, Milton. Enjoy your other sandwich. Catch you later, Milton. You probably will. My truck's dead. Say, you've got these, uh, welcoming gifts here. Preflin' father, going away gifts, which we do incur we do at your earliest convenience. Yeah, what's on offer? You may choose between five options, sir. A jolly good fridge magnet with the inscription, Fish with, not even once. A leather T-shaped shirt that says, uh, I went to fish with and all I got was out of there real fast. Horrible grammar, I know. A coffee mug reading. Fishmouth. Yeah. A Fishmouth Tourist Attractions Interactive Guide on Floppy Disk. There's really nothing to see, so no point in wasting DVDs on it. And finally, by far the most popular choice, the Fishmouth Multi-Tool. Opens anything, provides hints, helps solve puzzles, coerces people to reveal passwords, requires ceremony, shaving of head, stripping down to underwear, slight change of religion, a uh, six-month-long vow of silence and a little blood sacrifice. Very useful tool. Which which one of the five shall it be, sir? I'll have the coffee mug. An uh, interesting choice, sir. There you are. Be seeing ya. I wish you would reconsider. Good day. Maybe Tad would like this sandwich. Oh, thanks, Buzz. He'll love it. Don't mention it. Think I could get some of that dolphin milk now? Sure. Here you go. See ya, Annie. Later, Buzz.
A strangely shaped reef. Almost an island, really. There's really no way around it. It looks like a pair of horns surfacing from below. Makes for a striking sunset scene, I must admit. A rusty, creaking fishing boat that's seen better days. It's an old, drunk sailor chilling in that rope coil. Man, one day I'll grow a beard just like his. Hi there, Gramps. What you? Get, get lost, young'un. My name's Buzz. Nice to meet you. Get on out of here. Fish, fish myth ain't no place for you, boy. Well, at least you Fishmuthians are consistent about that. What a great evening to be alive, isn't it? <sighs> you think I'm crazy, don't you? Where'd you get that idea? <sighs> Old Zadok knows. You should not be drinking that, old-timer. Who? Who? Who are you to tell Old Zadok what to do, sonny? Go! Get... You think I'm crazy, don't you? No, I really don't. I hate to come across as judgmental, but do you really want to spend your twilight years in an alcohol-induced stupor? It is not a choice, sonny boy. If you'd have seen what these old eyes have seen, I tell you. Tell me. Uh, nah, rather drink, boy. Whiskey makes one forget. You said you wanted to forget? Why not remember? There's things too uh, horrible to be remembered, boy. Believe all Zadok. Why you think I'm crazy, don't you? I don't know why you insist on asking me that. I do not think you're crazy, Grandpa. Really need that drink, huh? <sighs> I... I'm willing to do you a world of good and take that cursed whiskey off of your hands. Have you considered a healthier alternative? What you babbling about there, boy? How about tea? Nothing like a warm cup of tea to relax you and get you in the mood for a chat. I can stand that stuff. I've been a fisherman all my life, boy. It was just water, 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 all the time. I ain't putting that water down concoction in me, no sir. Kinda got a point there. How about soda? Soda? <laughs> Why that sugar water, son? <laughs> Healthy alternative, my salty behind. Can't argue with that. How about orange juice? <laughs> Ain't no orange juice in fish, my sonny boy. You's more likely to squeeze juice out of a calamari. And you don't want to taste that, Trussell Zadok. I'll take your word for it. How about coffee? I never touched the stuff. Never even smelled it. You've never smelled coffee? Not in my life, boy. My mama, rest us all, she tried to get my peppy to drink it. Left the old hooch. But my peppy wasn't having any of it. Deceive a little. It's the devil's drink. Then he dunk another whiskey. <laughs> Lord rest us. That's a story to remember, Gramps. Mr. Zadok, I've brought you something. What is it, boy? Coffee. What? Get the gosh darn abomination out of my face. Hmm, this gives me an idea. I gotta run. Run, boy. Never return.
Mr. Zadok, brought you something to drink. Why, there's just one of my old bottles. Get on out of here with that young one. <sighs> this guy knows his bottles. I gotta run. Run, boy! Mr. Zadok, got you a little something. What is it? It's a special kind of liquor. Very exotic import. Liquor? Says so on the label. Now, don't expect it to taste like regular hooch. It's very exotic. It's supposed to have a real kick to it. L let me see that. <sighs> Smells like nothing I ever smelled before. And I can't say it's bad either. What is this devilry, boy? Kind of got me feeling all fluttery inside. Special import. Supposed to really get you going. I'll say. Why, I feel refreshed as ever. It's like, it's like this curtain slowly lifting off of me eyes and mind, son. Whew, you done all Zadok a mighty good one. Can you get me more of this stuff? I I'll let you know what it is and where to get it. But I'd like that bottle of whiskey in return if that's all right with you. Ah, take it. Who needs that stuff? I can safely say this has been a full-fledged epiphany, Puzz. Hey, you remembered my name. Thanks. Not a problem, son. Boy, do I feel good. I just might get up and walk around a little later. Good to hear, Mr. Zadok. Now that you're refreshed, care to tell me a bit about Fishmouth? What is it you want to know, Puzz? Why is everyone so secretive here in Fishmouth? Where do I begin, my friend? See, you're stuck of a curse that runs through most of Fishmouth's residents' blood. Turn them into fish and toad-like things. And then they dig to the water. But that's not even the worst thing. You'd think that's the worst thing, wouldn't you? Oh, there's worse. And I've seen it with my own two eyes, hanging around the abandoned factory up Elliott Street. Seen them. Hideous fishmen and octopus like monsters. Caught a glimpse of them in the moonlight. Heard their awful noises. Horrible! It were horrible! The curse? Nah, Buzz. It weren't the curse. These things were not born this way. They was mutants. Abominations. Cobbled together from fish and man and squid. The butcher. That's who they whisper made those things. Who's the butcher? <sighs> I don't know that, Buzz. But I suppose it's some shady character that's in cahoots with the esoteric order of Dagon. And they're raising hell in a fishmouth. Raising hell. Literally. How can I get to this abandoned factory? You can't now. They've shut off those streets. In preparation for their evil festival. Ever heard of a man called Bob Olmstein? Can't say I ever did. He's supposed to be staying at the Finman. The Finman, huh? Uh, folks legend here have a habit of disappearing without a trace. Sneaky fella, that Finman. Slippery as an eel. What's this esoteric order I keep hearing about? The esoteric order of Dagon. Fishman folks worshipping the Deep Ones. Dagon's their high priest. Supposed to be this... Huge amphibian thing. That's what the festival's about. Worshipping Dagon in sacrifices they bring to him. Sacrifices? What kind of sacrifices? I shudder to think, my boy. But what I can tell you is that they're raising something over in Crackham Bay. And if you ask me, it can only be the half goofa. Half goo what? The half goofa. Huge ugly sea monster. And yeah, I reckon that sucker's gotta be big, since they ain't letting anyone anywhere near Kraken Bay for a year now. Completely cut it off. No way to enter it from anywhere. I've got a confession to make. What's that, Buzz? The liquor I gave you that you loved so much? That's actually coffee. What? Well, I'll be darned. You sure pulled a fast one on old Zadok, haven't you? Well, 
Good on you, Buzz. But you know what? Good on me too. Cause I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. I guess I love coffee and I gotta live with myself now. I just might be hooked on it. Well, better than whiskey. You're right, Buzz. And when you're right, you're right. Right? Right. I'll see you later, Mr. Zadok. God bless you, boy. Take care. Looks like the oldest ship anchored in Fishmouth Harbor. If only it could tell its tales. Oh man, people actually braved the sea aboard these wooden coffins. Crazy. Man, I'm glad I'm not a sailor. Ooh, an actual sea captain in the flesh. She even smells like one. She's really into what she's reading over there. Ooh, she... Ahoy! That's your ship over there? She ain't going nowhere anytime soon, lubber. <laughs> Frankly, I'm flattered you'd call me that, but I don't think we've met before. Leave your bilge, rat. Oh, okay, understood. Bye. What is it about sailing that turns people to alcohol? The vast Yelan lubber. A vast to you too, kind sir. Mr. Finman, got you a little something to wash down the cookie with. Let me smell that. Oh, you did good, stranger. You was mighty kind. Mighty kind, I tell you. <coughs> ah, well, that hit the spot. And here's your cookie. You ain't tampered with this here fine piece of pastry now, has ya? Oh, God forbid, no. Down the hatch! <coughs> good. Thanks, stranger. What? What you standing there all expectantly like that for? Oh, nothing. What? You expect me to kill over or something? <laughs> Boy, I got a stomach line with steel myself. I... What the heck? I don't know what you put in that cookie, but it wasn't working. I have no idea either. My roommate... Wait a minute! Care to explain what's going on here? Not until you explain what your business with Mr. Olmstein is. <sighs> okay, I I'll come clean. I accidentally got involved in a mess that I can't make heads or tails of. That's why I'm here looking for him. I see. Well, there are two possible situations. Either your heart is full of darkness and deceit, in which case, I suggest you turn around and run. Or, your intentions are pure and your heart innocent. In which case, we can talk. My heart is not the issue here, it's my brain. I feel like I'm going crazy. Look, I've been sent here by the voodoo gentleman. I understand Mr. Olmstein might play an important role in this occult situation I stumbled into. Role? No, he plays no role. But what is yours? What part was assigned to you? Part? I'm just a librarian, sir, and this detective guy came looking for the, the Necronomicon. Kidtype. Exactly, and then they kidnapped him. Kidnapped? Who kidnapped him? Search me. Anyway, I've been walking around with this Necronomicon thing on me. You have it? The real one? It's gotta be real. Made my cat start talking. Sup? Hello. Yes, that explains that. Well, that's us. What's Olmstein to you? You speak his name so lightly, I... Let's just say I watch him from a distance. Try and look out for danger, pointless as though that might be. 
pointless. Why? I just might be a fly buzzing around a lion. Never mind. I don't normally get close to him, but if you do have the real Necronomicon... Here it is! Huh. An exception will be made. We'll walk up to his room, and we'll see from there. What else was I expecting? He's gone. Again. It might mean they're coming. We must stay vigilant. They? Who's they? Oh, too many possibilities in that regard. Oh my god, all this for nothing. It just keeps getting worse. You might as well at least tell me your name. Mine is Buzz Kerwin and this is Kid A. You may call me Barnabas. I am... Uh, I am a protector of the other, a seeker of truth and a hunter of evils. Must look nice on your business card. Okay, first of all, how do you know Don? I was the one who hired him to find the Holy Tome. It should never fall into the hands of madmen. Why hire Don? Is he an occult detective? No, but he is a damn good seeker. Well, maybe was. Oh man, don't say that! I'm sure he'll find a way to pull through. Madmen? What madmen? The Parish of the Starry Knowledge, the Esoteric Order of Dagon, or the... The Butcher. Starry Parish? Foul worshippers of a thing called the Haunter, and the shining trapezohedron it dwells in. Ugh, geometry. I've heard of the Esoteric Order. What's up with them? Have you now? So you also know of what they're raising here, in Fishmoth? Um, not really. The Hafgufa. Those idiots. Those complete and utter morons. They have no idea what that can bring about. Well, neither do I, but... Are you gonna do something about the Hafgufa? They've cut off access to Kraken Bay completely. But I'll think of something. I must. The Butcher? Tell me about the Butcher. This is not the place nor the time for that, but what I will say is this. He must not have the Necronomicon. You must keep it away from him, at all cost. Sounds like someone I'd stay away from regardless. Do not underestimate his reach, and watch your step here in Fishmouth. Him and the Esoteric Order are likely in cahoots, and they're everywhere. Okay, so what does he want with the Necronomicon? To bring this world to its knees. Okay, that makes sense, sure. Uh, anyway... About Olmstein. What did you mean by the other? Olmstein? What makes him other? Who is he, anyway? Though you carry the book, you must understand my reluctance toward telling you these things. Still, see here. Though he walks among us, he is not like us. Aw, oh, jeez, with the cryptic talk again. If you're protecting Olmstein, how come you didn't knock Finman out earlier? That guy was definitely up to some gruesome stuff. Maybe Olmstein would have still been around. I was about to take him out. I had reserved all the remaining rooms just to make sure no one would intervene. Then you came along, and I had to be cautious. Maybe I still should be. You do walk around with spiked pastry on your person. Not spiked enough. But I'm kinda glad to be rid of it. Anyway... Can you describe Olmstein to me? Ha! Huh. That would be futile. He might appear different to you than he does to me. Or you might see him clearly, and not be able to remember it an hour later. His nature is hard to grasp for all of us. But the voodoo gentleman described him as just, you know, some friend of his. Was he trying to deceive me, or...? There's no time to go into this, but that should not surprise you. Olmstein appears in different ways to different people. It is his nature. Wonderful. Changing subject. 
So he does this a lot, disappear at the worst possible moment? It is in his ever-changing nature, yes. But there is always, always a little breadcrumb left behind. Uh-huh, might as well look for it, right? Yes, I will... I will trust you to do that. I'll keep an eye on the stairs in the meantime. Get to it. <sighs> it's what I do. A conspicuous piece of paper lying on Olmstein's bed. Crow's feathers strewn all over the place. Is this guy some kind of bird enthusiast? The word you're looking for is ornithophile. I thought you couldn't read. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Hey, look at that! It's a pretty neat painting of the harbor. Accurate, too. Although I don't see old Zadok pictured, so maybe not that accurate. A particularly unattractive representative of the Fishmouth population. I'd place him anywhere between fearsomely fishy and repulsively reptilian. Just... Ugh, this town, man. Completely empty. Either Olmstein travels light, or he's just wearing everything right now. I found this drawing. Can you make any sense of it? Olmstein's sign. Why would he leave it here again? What is it? What does it mean? I've seen it before, yes. I know not what it means, but it must have been left here for you. Me? But how could he know I was coming? And why me again? Why me? It is the role you play in this, and questioning it is a waste of time. Role? What role? Finding the book was an accident was just bad luck? That is how the tome works. The roles are defined, but the book is pure chaos. Help me understand more about Olmstein. I need to find him. I need to change my cat back. That is your stake in all of this? Hey! That has a name, buddy. Sort of. How did you come to know of Bob Olmstein? That is a story for another time. <sighs> Why is his name Bob Olmstein? I mean, you call him Other and all of that, but his name is so common? There must be a reason for that, but does it really matter? Not to me. What's Olmstein's game? Is he good? Is he evil? These are questions that I cannot outright answer with a yes or no. All I have is my belief and some suppositions, and the former is much more powerful than the latter. If they do exist, maybe the answers are not meant for the likes of us. What we must do is play our roles. What belief? I believe I must try and stay by his side, and right now I am failing at that. What was Olmstein up to here in Fishmouth? Perhaps checking on some seeds he had planted. Aw oh, man, I know you're just speaking figuratively and it's just that cryptic stuff again that just drives me mad. No offense, but why can't you just talk like normal people? I'm not normal people. Of course you're not. But is there anything helpful you can tell me about Olmstein? <sighs> I can tell you some things, I guess. He might seem ever-changing, yes, but balance and rules, these too are in his nature. Self-imposed balance and rules. Uh, I'm sure you can be more specific than that. What rules? Do you ever watch the moon buzz koan? Yeah, occasionally. There is something about it, its phases. They seem to correlate to important events and to how he affects this world. But in which way exactly? You'll need to find out on your own. The Necronomicon. You seem to know more about it than I do. What is it? Ah, uh, many things. We might call it holy, and we might be mistaken. Holy, as in not of this world. Uh, debatable, but do go on. It changes things. Sherlock Holmes over here. 
it chooses roles. It alters the very nature of things. But it does it when it wants or when the stars are right. And if it makes its way into the wrong hands, it ends existence itself. Well, that's encouraging. But mine are not the wrong hands, right? Right? They're not the most competent. That much is clear. No, they are not, I think. Why does it keep changing? The Necronomicon is chaos in written, volatile form. What do its pages hold? What language is it written in? And what does it all mean? I've never read it, nor do I want to. All I have to go on are rumors and whispers, but both hold more and more power in this world. As for the meaning of the words, some of them are most probably incantations or instructions of some kind. Instructions? Yes, and stories. Stories? What stories? It does not matter now. You must focus on your next move. Would it be safer in your hands? You do seem to know a lot more about it. No. No. Maybe I fear it more than you do. But that is not why I refuse it. It is not for me to bear it. Yeah, I guess I need it to turn Kitty back. Yes, yes, you, uh, you need to do that. You said the book is pure chaos, but Olmstein is about rules and balance? How does that work? You make a good point. For a while now, I've been suspecting there must exist a counterpoint to the chaotic tome. If there is such a thing, it should be sought out before it's too late. Great, but I have no leads, no nothing. Can you help out in any way? I am considering it. Let me think about it. <gasps> what was that? I think they're coming. The stairs. Damn it! Quick, out the window! Are you serious? It's really up high! Have faith. You can make it. I'll hold them back. But I don't know what to do or where to go or... There's no time. Go! Go! Find peace! Find peace! Hey there, Buzz! Fancy running into you! Mr. Katype! Please, uh, call me Don! Welcoming town, Fisherman! Ain't it? Yeah, lovely. Boy, am I glad to see you! You okay, Don? Well, I have no shoes and I don't know where I'm running, but aside from that, I'm alright! You, uh, headed my way! Got a thing or two to uh, catch up on! Let's talk about it in Darkham! Taxi! All right, we uh, should be safe in here. I uh, hope. Better keep the lights down. You don't happen to have any cat food lying around, do you? Huh. I keep forgetting it can speak. It? Rude. Look, I let you two rest all the drive here from Fishmouth, but now it's time for us to buck up, get our coconuts situated, and work out where we're at. Right. So what happened to you? I cracked lid in the underbunk of some lunatic cult. These guys were also after the Necronomicon, but apparently you gave them the slip. Not the sharpest crayons in the box. The Starry Knowledge Cult. Yeah, how'd you know? Anyway, they kneel and keel to some kind of rock what came from the stars. Supposed to croak you or give you some kind of vision beyond time if you lay your mitts on it. So did you? Now I glow in the dark. The Haunter's Mark, they call it. Ain't something I'd believe if I read it in the pulps, but now it's on me, I can't deny it. Things have definitely gone 15 shades of bizarro. And there's a talking cat. Again, I'm right here. Rude. Whoa. Did you try using your, uh, power? I didn't get the chance. I snuck out and crept around those smelly streets until I saw you legging it. That's about it. What you got? Well, I read from the book and now Kitty talks. There's that. Then I visited a voodoo dude who told me to look for this Bob Olmstein guy in Fishmouth. Long story short, Olmstein had already left, but I did meet your employer. 
fella by the name of Barnabas. Pretty big guy, white dreadlocks and beard, maybe in his 50s? Huh, I'll have to look him up in my files. Yeah, well, Barnabas is convinced Olmstein is of almost, um, divine nature? And there's also another cult called the Esoteric Order of Dagon, and they're about to have their creepy festival in Fishmouth soon. Oh, and there's a guy called the Butcher. <sighs> Just saying it all out loud makes my head spin. I know about those esoteric weirdos. Not the first time they completely shut off Fishmouth to do God knows what. Butcher, those starry kooks mentioned them. All Barnabas told me was to keep the Necronomicon away from the Butcher at all cost. And you know what's weird? Barnabas hired you to find the book, but he wouldn't take it when I offered it. Strange. Well, he did pay up front, so uh, he's alright as far as I'm concerned. So, what do we do now? You, uh, wanna help? Kid, strange and mysterious are why I work this beat. Now that I've lost my shoes and my hand is all magic-like, this old bloodhound ain't going back to the kennel until he's got some answers. Oh, boy, am I glad to hear that. Alright, well, there's two things. One, apparently there must be some item that counterbalances the Necronomicon's chaos, so we should probably look for that. And two, Barnabas told me to find peace. I kind of want to research that online. You do have internet, right? Uh, yeah, there should be some in that laptop thing. Oh, brother. You look into that. I want to see what this Haunter's Mark is all about. That there's Kitty. For a talking animal, she is pretty uncommunicative. She doesn't like me. Can't say the feeling's mutual. She is mean and tight-lipped. I can appreciate that. I don't think the Hunter's Mark works on her. Hey, Kitty. Is it important? No. Let me know when it is. <laughs> okay, Kitty. Just my desk. Man, this thing must weigh a ton! This guy better tip well. Wouldn't count on it, Vince. He ain't for money, I can tell you that. Whoa, you sounded eerie. And you were talking in a couple of different voices. Never been much of a thespian, so I guess the Haunter's Mark does work. I think you were channeling the movers. How long ago was that? I don't know. Years. I had a feeling I shouldn't tip the short, annoying one. Well, you can now legit read the past. Future would have probably been more helpful, but I'm not complaining. All right, give me a minute to look up this Barnabas fella. Who even still uses file cabinets, Joey? Just uh, don't drop it on my toes again, Vince. Ugh, drag this all the way up here and I bet it's empty, Joey, I bet it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with you on that, Vince. Man, those were some judgmental movers. Nothing in there. Let's see here. Hey, Bozinski, I think I got something on that fine peace thing. I don't believe Barnabas was trying to guide you to a life of mindfulness and meditation. He's got a daughter called Peace. Peace, Pusara. Oh, of course, that makes sense. Can you, you know, look her up? On it. <laughs> I think I got it. I found Peace Busara's blog. What's a... Nah, never mind. What does it say? Oh, uh, well, the latest entry's pretty cryptic. It just says land beyond the forest and a, a bunch of numbers. 
Okay, these must be spatial coordinates. Tracking them down now. Man, this is just like in the movies. And I was right. She's in... Formaris, Transylvania, Romania? Well, well. Hey, here's an idea. Feel like visiting your ancestral home, Kerwin? Are you kidding me more than anything? But I'm hopelessly broke, and... Don't worry about it. Barnabas paid well, and I want to see this thing through. Awesome! You excited to see Romania, Buzz? Dude, I have been dreaming of this for years and never could afford it. The extra layer of mystery is just the cherry on top. Yeah, well, it ain't all fun and games. We're dealing with lunatics here. Found anything worth examining on your trip to Fishmouth? Actually, yes. Barnabas called it Olmstein's Sign. He apparently left it on purpose so that I could find it. Here it is. No idea what it means. Do you hear that, Joey? This guy's talking to his plant. He named it and everything. Man's probably lonely, Vince. Leave it at that. <sighs> Maybe I'm a little lonely. Oh well. Flamel's abode. Flamel's abode? Did I hear that right? I think so. Does it ring a bell? Well, there's one famous Flamel I know of, and he's, well, was an alchemist. Looking it up. Pretty useful thingamabob, that laptop. 51 Rue de Montmorency, Paris, France. 14th century alchemist Nicolas Flamel's ancient home. Alchemist, huh? Could tie into the whole balancing chaos thing. All right, looks like that's my destination. European road trip! So, when do we leave? No better time than now. Radical. Yeah, radical. <laughs>